Hello musicians, welcome back. My name is Bucky Dirtle and I'm doing a video tutorial today on MuseScore 2. This is the music notation software. Um, it's open source music notation software. It's fantastic. I love it. If you enjoy using the software, be sure to visit the web, the developer's website and show your support. Okay, so MuseScore 2. I'm going to be talking today about the header. The header. Now, the header is a very important part of our musical score. And the notation, of course, is the meat and potatoes of it, for sure. But the header is a really important way for us to organize everything, tell the musicians what we need, what you need done, how you need things played, and to keep it organized for librarians or musicians to keep everything straight. Now, there's an industry standard way of doing things with headers, um, which you might want to adhere to, but there's also lots of options for you to customize it to make it exactly what you need for your project. So let's dig in. First of all, I have Twinkle Twinkle Little Star notated here. I just did it as a placeholder, so we're not going to be working on the on the notation, but uh, I just have it here for us for our just as a placeholder. So you notice at the top here, I have Twinkle Twinkle Little Star title Twinkle Twinkle. Now, when I right click on Twinkle Twinkle, it will open up an inspector on the right hand side. So this element Twinkle Twinkle, the text will open up over here so I can make some basic edits. Okay, I want you to remember that so that when we, we'll come back to that a little later. So when I actually click, right click on the element Twinkle Twinkle, it shows up over here. Okay, now if I left click anywhere here in the, t in the header, if I left click or two finger tap, I'm on a Mac, I can two finger tap on my trackpad, it gives me some options, copy, paste, swap the clipboard, which we talk about in another tutorial, uh, select edit element and add. We're going to look at add. Now here you can see that we can add a number of different things. We have our title already. We have text, subtitle, composer, lyricist, part name, horizontal frame, and picture. Now we're going to look at some of these and learn how to manipulate these. So let's talk first about, first about subtitle. Now if I click subtitle, it will automatically place it where the industry standard subtitle would go. So let's just put in, I don't know, fun song as our title, as our subtitle. So you can see it's underneath. Now what MuseScore does is it writes in the industry standard font size and position of where a subtitle would normally be. And that's what it is. You can move it around and things if you want. You can change the font size, but, but that's the industry standard. Okay, let's move on. We'll talk a little bit more how you can customize it a little later, but right now let's move on. I'm going to right click again anywhere in the window, anywhere in the header, and I'm going to go to add again. And you see composer. Okay, the composer Twinkle Twinkle is Mozart. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Okay, and if I click anywhere in the window, anywhere in the rest of the window, it will accept my change. So you can see here now we have, again, the industry standard position and the size the composer's name. Let's right click again and go to add and now you'll see lyricist. Let's try that one. Let's let's assume there's lyrics that we're going to write in this. I'm not going to do it here today but let's say I did the lyrics. I didn't but let's say we did. Bucky Dirtle. And I'll again I'll click anywhere in the window and there you go and that is the industry standard position for the lyricist. Okay and again it's the same size too. You wouldn't want to mix these up because that would say that I actually wrote the piece if I put it on this side and Mozart was the lyricist. Let's do add again and let's go to part name. This is very common, very important one. Now I'm a violinist myself so I'm used to seeing my violin part written up here. Violin 1 or violin 2, whichever. But this is a violin 1 part. So let's say violin 1 and I click here. Now notice this is at the top left hand corner. It's a very large font. This is for librarians and for musicians so they can see exactly whose part this is at a, at just at a glance. They don't hide it away or make it a small text. It's very prominent up in the top left corner. Again, industry standard, but you can change this yourself if you wanted to. Now, I'm going to click right, I'm going to right click again on the header and you'll see in add we have some other things like picture, horizontal frame, this kinds of things. I'm not going to bother with that. You can play with those things if you want. I'm going to move on to some other customizations because these other things are pretty straightforward and you can figure these out yourself. They work the same as the other things we just did. Now, in here, the things I've added in here in the header, 
I can right, I can left click on any of these and you see they highlight blue when I left click on them. And if I left click on them, you'll see that the element shows up over here in the inspector. Again, let me just show you that. I'm gonna, I'll click somewhere else. Now I'll click on Fun Song. And this is it here. Now it's highlighted blue. So any changes I make over here will show up, will change what this Fun Song, what the subtitle is. And you'll notice the text, the style that's chosen here. It says subtitle. Well, if I down, pull this down, this uh, pull down, you'll notice that there's a lot of these styles. And you might say to yourself, well, why do we have all these styles? What is this? These are the industry standard um, options that we have when we're putting in text or you know any kind of marking in a score. So let's say, for example, you were going to put in a, a tempo change. Okay, and let's say the fun song text, you want it to be a tempo change. If I click that now, look what happened. It moved over. Actually, it's in the way now of the, of the instrument name, but that's where it went, right there. Now, it's, that's where the tempo would normally be, the tempo setting. Um, if I went to another one, I did um, instrument name. No, I already got that one. String number. Why not? Look at that. It gave it a different look. Now let's go back to our subtitle. That's where it should be. So depending on what you what you're writing in, you can change this to whatever you want, and it will place it anywhere on the score it's supposed to be. Now let's have a look here with the horizontal offset and vertical offset. Let's say you want to move this this text. Let's say you don't want it right there. Let's say you want to move it. Let's say horizontally. You can change it by hitting or up arrows. You can just type in the number if you want, but you can down arrow and up arrow these and it will move the text wherever you want it to be. You see that? Now if you say, now I want to go back to the original, by hitting these saw, these arrows right here, it will take you back to the default. So there it goes back to the default. Now you can do that with any of these. I can do the same thing with my instrument name. You see that? I can move it around. I can do all kinds of things. I can go back to the default by hitting the side arrows. There you go. Nothing to it. Now. I can do that with any of the elements that are in here in this uh, header. Now, let's forget these texts for a second. Let's click just on the header itself. Now, I'm only clicking on the white of the header. And look what happens on the right-hand side now in the inspector. I have all of these options. I have my top gap, bottom gap, height, left, right margins, top, bottom margins. I can move all these things around too. Look at this top gap. If I click that one, I'm increasing the top gap it gives me a space above the header. You might want that for something, for one of your projects. Bottom gap, it's a space between the header and the music. Again, you might want that for some reason. The height of the uh, of the actual header itself. And the, you can take it to whatever you want it to be. So, here you go. So, now, let's... I made a really small... There you go. So now we're back more like it. Um, and the margin as well, and this is the margin within the header. It's not the margin to the edge of the page, it's the margin within the header. Okay, and the top and bottom margin is the same, it's within the header itself. You can change the margin within the header. And I can go back to my defaults again. Okay, so that means that the placement of the header, the shape, the size of the header can all be changed by you to fit your project. So you can play with that to make sure it fits exactly what you need. Now, I'm a violinist. And as oftentimes I've gotten music on my stand that people have wanted me to play uh, that has not been formatted correctly. And it is difficult to decipher it. Because we train ourselves to be able to look at a piece of music and play it immediately. If there's changes or if things aren't industry standard, it makes it a little bit more difficult to process that immediately. So then you need more rehearsal time. So if you are putting a piece of music in front of a piano player or a violinist or whatever... Make sure that you have it nice and clear and try to stick to the industry standards when you can because that will have less confusion and it will be you'll need less rehearsal time and of course if this is a if this is a commercial project then you know rehearsal time is money so you, this it will cost you less if you do all your formatting properly. So there you go. You can do that now because now you have the skills to take care of all this header so there you go. Now, if you have any questions about this, feel free to connect with me in utopian.io Discord, or you can get me in the comments of this post. Feel free. 
I'm happy to hear about your music and answer any questions you may have about this software or any other music software that I do tutorials on. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.